kids. It is time to talk about the Wars of the Roses and to finish off our English history study. We will begin uh, talking about Africa after this. And um, first of all, I'm going to give you a little bit of background ahead of the game for the Wars of the Roses. You are familiar with the major players of the Wars of the Roses because you read Richard III uh, with Carol. So here is the short and sweet version. You also should have watched the video I posted earlier in the week. So, all right. So Henry V, he's the guy with the bad haircut. He rules England and beats up on the French um, until 1422. In 1420, he manages to get the French king to agree to the Treaty of Troyes, which was very disastrous for the French. And as part of that treaty, Henry V got to marry one of Henry, uh, one of the French king's daughters. Her name was Catherine of Valois. Now the French king at the time, his name was Charles VI of France, and he was nuts. Um, he thought he was made of glass, and if you touched him, he would shatter. He thought also that his name wasn't Charles, it was something else, I think it was George or something. And he went around trying to scrape the initials of himself and his wife off the windows of the Louvre, which back then was a palace and not an art museum. Uh, he didn't like to wear clothes. He would pee on his clothes. He wouldn't eat because he was freaked out. And um, he, they had to bring in people dressed as monsters to scare him to put clothes on or to eat, eat food. Um, he tried to run away and get out of the castle uh, frequently, so they bricked him in so he couldn't run away. Um, these cycles of madness came and went, okay? And I believe this was touched on one of the other videos I had you watch. Um, and he could tell when things were starting to go, Crazy King Charlie. And uh, at one point he was at a banquet and he could begin to feel things sort of slip upstairs. And he um, asked that everybody, that the knives be removed from the table so that he wouldn't hurt anybody. So there's a certain amount of, yeah, it's funny, he thought he was made of glass and he would shatter and all sorts of kind of stuff. Um, there's a certain element of, of uh, fun in that, but it was actually a pretty human, unpleasant tragedy. The poor guy, uh, he knew when he went nuts that one of his uncles would take over and do bad stuff. And then he spent most of his time when he wasn't nuts fixing what his uncles did that was bad and then he'd go nuts again. Um, he, in his illness, made France pretty much a disaster uh, until he died. And then it didn't get much better because as also a part of the Treaty of Troyes, uh, Henry V was either going to become King of France after the death of Charles VI or any issue that Henry had with Catherine of Valois, meaning any kids. Well, he only had one, and that kid was Henry VI. Now, Henry VI uh, becomes King of England and of France, I suppose technically in 1422, since both crazy King Charlie VI of France and Henry V of England died um, in 1422, within a few months of each other. Now, um, when Henry dies, Henry VI uh, becomes king and he's a baby, he's busy filling his diaper. So they have people running the kingdom for him for most of his childhood. I think when he becomes 17 or 18 or whatever, he um, ends up running the kingdom on his own. But Charles, or Henry VI, was not the swiftest canoe in the fleet, folks. Not by a long shot. Um, he was extremely passive. He just wanted everybody to get along. Um, he was extremely religious and um, a bit of a milk toast. He got walked on a lot, um, particularly by his wife. Um, I'll talk about it in a second. Meanwhile, while Henry was being raised by his English relatives, his French mother was shipped off to Wales, like the equivalent of the UP, um, because she was French and they did not want the French queen to have anything to do with the upraising, uh, with the raising of, a, of an English king. So they shipped her off to Wales where she met a guy named Owen Tudor. Owen Tudor was basically like the Chamberlain of her house. And um, the two of them messed around and eventually got married, and she had a few sons with Owen, 
One of them was named Jasper. I forget, Edmund was the other one. And um, those two boys ended up being um, basically half-brothers to Henry VI. And it is through Catherine of Valois' um, dalliance, I suppose, and marriage to Owen Tudor that we get the Tudor line. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about Henry VII in just a bit. But Henry VII comes through the Tudor line, and Henry VII is actually related to Henry VI because they share um, a mother or a grandmother or great-grandmother or whatever. Um, so Henry VI rules from 1422 to 1460. Right around 1453, he has a mental breakdown. Now, the sad thing, the really sad thing about Charlie VI craziness is that it was hereditary and Henry VI caught it. Um, he ended up basically being catatonic, and I don't know if you know what catatonic is. It's basically where the lights are on, but nobody's home. People who are catatonic sometimes have had some sort of massive psychological trauma that basically makes them shut down. Their, their eyes, they still blink their eyes, their heart still beats, they still breathe. If you put food in, them out, in their mouth, they'll chew it and swallow it. Sometimes uh, the catatonia is such that you can pose them and their arms will stay however they were posed for hours. Um, the issue with, Char with Henry VI wasn't so much that you could put him in a corner and pose him like a ballerina. It was that he was just out, O-U-T. He slept most of the time. Um, the, his wife, Margaret of Anjou, who was an extremely unpleasant woman, who you, I think, met in Richard III, um, she wanted to hide the fact that he was from everybody else, and so she didn't let anybody see him for three months. And his attendants got so tired of basically having to clean up after him because he didn't say, I have to go to the bathroom, take me to the potty. He pretty much just went in his pants. So eventually they would put him in a chair with a hole in the, in the seat of the chair. And if he had to go to the bathroom, there was a bucket underneath the hole. He'd just go in the hole into the bucket. Well, you know, when you're the king of England, this is not ideal for like meeting ambassadors or figuring out whether you approve of a decree or anything like that. Margaret of Anjou didn't want to lose power, so she ended up um, trying to hide it from everybody. It didn't really work, and the Duke of York, Edward IV Stad, eventually figured out that things were not so great, and he had himself appointed regent, and um, Henry VI was O-U-T, loopy, for 18 months. When he comes out of it, he's still not quite right. He wasn't great before. He's not any better after. Um, and it is because of his lack of, I don't know, he didn't have a forceful personality. His wife did. Boy, howdy. But he was sort of, you know, not really there.